Hello, welcome back to Small Holding. So we're pretty much last week in July now, and I just thought I'd give you a quick tour around the, the no dig vegetable garden, just show you what's going on. So uh, follow me, let's go have a look. So just quickly before we look at the vegetables, I'll just show you my trees. Um, these are my hazels that I grew from nuts uh, last autumn. They're coming on really well. Uh, last count, I think there was just over 150, and they're up, some of them are up sort of eight or nine, possibly 10 inches, some of them. And uh, these are the sycamores, the, the ones that were in the little seven centimeter pots I've now potted on into one liter pots. And you know, they're coming on, they're not quite as tall as the hazels, but they're coming on. These two trays, for some reason, aren't doing as good. Now that was my own homemade compost there. And um, I'm thinking maybe it, it had a bit too much wood in it. Um, so they're it's sort of holding them back a little bit. This here was half and half my compost and multi-purpose and they've done a little bit better. So I just need to keep messing about with my mixes and um, also maturing my own homemade compost is, is quite an important thing going forward. And I'll show you my composting at the end of the tour because I'm, I'm getting into a good place now where I've got an excess of compost. So I'm gonna actually start maturing my compost outside. I'm gonna have to make a little bay maybe at the back here and put the compost outside where it can stay and mature a bit longer because I've got three bay system so I'm thinking of having a fourth like I say a fourth bay out here just to mature it a bit but we'll carry on round now so between the trees and my potatoes in containers I've got my little seedling bench which I had to make because the birds were hooking all my seedlings about um, just a bit of uh, bird and butterfly netting on and in here I've got my um, Brussels sprouts plants. I've got enough for um, I think two and a half beds uh, and I've also got my winter cabbage, savoy cabbage coming on and a few other seedlings. I'm trying some late sowings of uh, French dwarf French beans. Um, I saw someone else doing it. I've never done it this late. I always do them early on but I just thought I'd give it a go so I've got some of them coming on. I've got some Japanese radish, uh, some kohlrabi, and I'm actually also doing a little trial uh, like I did with my parsnips. I'm doing some carrots uh, sewn in modules so that I can just pop them out in any gaps. As gaps appear, I'll just fill them with carrots pretty much, or carrots or radishes. Uh, I've also got some beetroot and some pak choy coming on. And I've actually had a little bit of flea beetle damage on the pak choy. I, I always seem to get a few flea beetle here. Um, hasn't been so bad this year last year I had a bit of an infestation in that heat wave every time I walked past my my brassicas it sounded like somebody was throwing a handful of sand it just you could just hear them just just jumping as I was walking past and it really did get out of control a bit but it hasn't been so bad this year but I'm not quite sure how they got up here but it's definitely flea beetle uh, but they're coming on okay they should outgrow it hopefully so this is my little seedling bench it's, it's been a godsend really it really does uh, save them from the birds so this is where I keep my potatoes in containers I've done two types of of main crop and two types of second earlies which I'm harvesting at the moment I'm just going through them knocking them out as I need them really um, I did have a bit of a funny thing happen with the charlotte, all the charlotte, just the charlotte as well, all wilted and I thought that maybe it was going to be some sort of blight. Uh, they all, all the foliage just wilted down and I thought they were going to completely die. Some of them, it's these ones here, some of them have come back and I, I actually knocked some out and had a fairly decent harvest. Not as much as I was hoping, but fairly decent considering all the foliage had died back. Um, so I don't know what that was really, whether it was just a bad batch of seed potatoes um, or something. This, this was all my own compost, but all of these potatoes were my own compost. So I don't know what happened, but it was only the charlotte uh, and nothing else. So um, maybe it was just a bad batch of seed, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting some out of them. So I'm fairly happy. It's just a trial, uh, trying these containers and they've all come on quite well. I, I haven't obviously knocked out any of these main crops yet. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see that they're coming on, they're flowering now. So I'm just making sure to keep them well watered while they're flowering and then I shall be knocking them out fairly soon and, and seeing what we've got. So the climbing bean archway um, has been a real success. It's looking like it's gonna be a success anyway. Lots of flower on my czar beans um, and the cobra beans, cobra climbing French, and then all this side is blotto. 
So what I'm obviously trying to do this year is to grow quite a lot of um, beans for drying. Um, this is all part of the sort of self-sufficiency thing for me, really trying, trying to be as self-sufficient as possible um, in this sort of modern world. Um, but I'm just, I'm looking at growing as many beans for drying to give me sort of a, a winter protein source for soups and stews uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so with this archway, I've put beans either side, but what I am doing, because, and especially this time of year, I'm realizing that I'm, they're probably not gonna fully encase it. I mean, I don't know, we'll see how things go in a few weeks, but, but I'm, I'm hoping to utilize these beds, be able to do it each year. So I've put turnips this side, which have come on pretty well. They don't seem to be missing any light. In fact, most of them really need to come out. Um, there's a few smaller ones but um, some of them are pretty good size like that. And I, I do love my turnips there. They're nice with a, a roast dinner. Um, that's a variety called Alderton. They're a green topped variety, but they're pretty quick, pretty quick growing. And, and I've probably got, what have I got? About 80 and 90 turnips down there. And on this side, what I did is I had some Japanese radish. Uh, when I first put the beans in, they actually bolted and didn't do very well. So I pulled them out and I've just put some squash in here so I've got three honey boat squash and two butternut squash and I'll just let their sort of tendrils and all, all the runners just grow out through here out the sides so they can get the sun and I'm just going to see how they do under here um, and if they do okay then I know that going forward whenever I plant this up I can utilize those side beds as, as extra growing space but yeah it's looking like it's, it's been a pretty good success really the the bean arch so in this bed next to the bean arch, I have got um, a bed of all year round cauliflower. Now I've only ever grown cauliflower two or three times before and only half a dozen plants. And I've had uh, kind of on and off success with it. I don't particularly like cauliflower, but my wife and my daughter both love cauliflower cheese. So I said I'd, I'd grow a bed. They've come on okay. And a couple of them have started to form little tiny heads, but they just look, they, I don't know, I don't know if it's just cauliflowers, they just look a little bit ropey. Um, the leaves aren't the best green, but like I say, I'm, I'm new to growing cauliflowers, so it's just a bit of a learning curve for me. Um, but we'll see how they go coming on sort of later through the season. Then in this bed here, I've got purple sprouting. I just had a go through the other day and just remove some of the lower leaves and, and I've still got a bit of bind weed coming through here. So I had to go through, get all the bind weed out, removed a few lower leaves and they're looking lovely and healthy. I did have one cabbage white butterfly get in there. I don't know how it got in because there's no holes. All the nets were new last year, but it got in here somehow, maybe underneath a little gap and it laid some eggs on this central one here. So that got a bit hammered. I had to squidge the caterpillars off of that one. But all the rest are looking lovely and really strong and healthy. So obviously last winter, I lost all of my purple sprouting in that minus 14 that I had. Um, so I've actually got two beds and I've got another bed over there, purple sprouting. And I'm hoping that this winter they'll actually survive and I can get a good harvest next year. So next to my purple sprouting, I've got two permanent beds. Uh, I did a video on these a while back. These are my Mara de Bois strawberries. Um, they, again, these, these took a little while to get going. Um, I planted them, with, oh, I'm trying to think when it was, I think it was uh, late April. And um, they took okay, but they just took a little while to get going. So I didn't get much fruit earlier on. They, they tend to sort of fruit throughout the season, but what they're doing now is they've, they've obviously settled in they've really rooted in well they've, they've produced a lot of leaf and there are hundreds and hundreds of flowers um hence the bird netting i do need to get some wider bird netting because it's a bit tight over it and the flowers are popping through but um but anyway yeah i'm really pleased they've come on really well i did straw them up as well because i thought i'd just try and keep the the berries off the compost as best i can um but there's a lot of flower on these and they're really looking like they're going to do do really well so i'm, I'm really glad about that they, they're coming on a treat and uh lots of runners which i do need to keep on top of i can see <laughs> i only went through them the other day when i strawed it up but i can see already there's loads coming back so that's just something you, this time of year that you really need to keep on top of and, and just go through perhaps once a week and just pinch them out but yeah really happy with those they're looking fantastic cool cool hello cool yeah i've got two old decoys for my birthday 
I don't know if they do much good to be honest, but they, they don't seem to keep the blackberries away. But anyway, so next to my strawberry beds, this is what sort of is becoming my perennial veg area, this sort of side. I have put six um, purple sprouting in here that I had left over. Obviously don't want to waste anything, so I sort of fill gaps. So I've got six purple sprouting here. I've got a few onions here, which are just about ready to, to be pulled up and dried. Um, when I clear my garlic out of this bed, I've just popped in three butternut squash. Uh, got a bit, bit of a bigger area of uh, wood chip here and here, so I can kind of let the tendrils go out and spread out all over this area. This is my Egyptian walking onion, coming on quite nice and strong now. He hasn't started to flower yet. I don't know when they flower, never grown them before, but um, I'm gonna let that sort of spread in that area there. Um, so new additions to the perennial garden, perennial area is ochre. This is ochre giggle, giggles, um, like a, a bright red little sort of corm. They, they look similar to, um, Jerusalem artichokes but smaller never tried them before I've, I've seen them on a, a few videos and it's just another perennial thing I thought I'd give a go so I had four plants uh, a couple of them didn't do very well and I thought they were going to die and they still look a little bit sort of hairy not sort of not, not quite sure if they're going to make it or not but um, these two specifically have come on really well so I'm hoping to get some off, the, off of them to try and I also grew over here some Welsh onions so these again are something uh, that are perennial and will just sort of grow and you can pull them out and divide them and they just form clumps basically you can eat, eat the stems like chives and uh, they produce small little onions probably sort of perfect size for pickling or just dicing up in, into a salad again not something i've tried before but looking forward to see how they go i've actually got quite a large packet of seed i just did two little pots and they've come on really well and i've also got a babington leek um, again i've sort of looked into them a bit and they say that you sort of harvest them as you come into the late autumn and winter and that they will tend to die down a bit through the summer well it's died down completely so i'm hoping it will come back touch wood but um yeah like i say never grown them before so it's just something i'm trying um basically when i cleared my i had some spring onions in here i cleared them and i'm, I'm just trying to fit things in and fill gaps i've put four courgette plants here um, so I've just put the, the Babington leek just at, at the front of the courgettes there. So I'm hoping that will come on, um, like I say, later in the in the autumn. But um, And then back here, after losing my uh, perennial kales in that minus 14 as well last winter, I've got two more Dorbington kales there. These are from the cuttings that I took. I only had one of the Taunt Taunton Dean cuttings that I did survive which I've got in a pot and it, it isn't doing particularly well. It's come up, it's about this big, but I'm just trying to sort of nurse it back to health um, before I plant it out. I might actually leave it till next year. I might keep it at home um, this winter in the back garden where it's a bit more sort of, it doesn't get as cold as it does down here. It's a, it's, it's a bit more sort of obviously enclosed. But um, yes, yeah, so this is sort of the start of the perennial bit. But now we go over onto this side here. So this first bed, is my asparagus bed um, this is the second year and as you can see they're not i haven't came them up they have flopped a bit but they're not doing particularly well and and the problem is again it's the blackbirds they keep scraping away the, the uh, compost right down to within half an inch of the tops of the crowns and um obviously they, they do this all year round through the winter so, so i think I, I actually lost what have I lost? I've lost the end three plants. And I think they, they got completely exposed in the cold and it, it just killed them. So what I'm actually gonna do with this bed, uh, probably end of the year, may, maybe in the winter sometime, I'm gonna take some blocks off of my outdoor worm bed. I've got those double walled concrete blocks, big blocks weigh 30 kilos each. And I'm just gonna put a single layer. I think they're eight inches high, I think something like that. So I'm gonna surround this bed with one layer of blocks and then I can raise the compost up two or three inches quite easily and it's, they shouldn't be able to just flick it all out over the paths which is what they've been doing. Yes I could net it but I, I keep running out of nets and it's just 
it's just something I haven't got around to doing, but that is that is the plan. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm potting up a load of uh, strawberry runners off of my vibrant strawberries, which are an early fruiting uh, crop of strawberries. They come in in, in June, um, early June. I'm actually hoping to get enough plants that I can plant one strawberry in each of the holes in the block. So each block has two holes. I think I worked out it's about 26, 28 blocks, something like that to go around this bed. So, you know, good lot, good lot of strawberry plants. And then what I'll do is I probably will then net it as well to protect the strawberries early on and also just to help the asparagus come on a bit because it's, uh, it's not been doing particularly great. So I, I want to give it the best chance. And then up against the fence here, oh, at the end of the bed, because I have lost these, these three plants, I just pop, popped two um, cucumbers. They are a bit small, but um, again, birds are hooking things about that. They are a bit small, but they always tend to come on and I'll get some fruit. But up against the fence here, I've got to tie this in. This is a goji berry. I've actually got three of them. I've got one down the bottom there. This one isn't looking particularly good. This one has gone mad. Um, I don't know if it will fruit. There's no flower coming on it, but it was just something I wanted to try. I saw them on offer, so I ordered a pack of three. And, um, you know, I, I need to sort of figure out how to look after them, but it'll be interesting to see what they do in a good year. And next to the asparagus, if you remember my video on planting Jerusalem artichokes, I was moving them from the old potato patch where they had kind of got a little bit crowded the deer had been eating them we'd had a, a that drought last year and I, I couldn't waste the water because i was short and the foliage was all only about this high and nibbled and didn't look very good this is what they should look like so we're already at about six foot some of them and they probably will be flowering at some point um but they're still growing i had to put a string around to hold the foliage in so they're obviously loving the no dig soil they've uh this is probably as good as they've ever done for me down the bottom when I used to look after them better. Uh, so I'm hoping for a really good crop of these this year. And again, this is another perennial vegetable, sort of all to do with the sort of self-sufficiency thing for me. See how, I'm gonna see how they come on, see what sort of crop I can get from one bed. And I might possibly give them another bed uh, and, do, and do two lots. So I do quite like the, the Jerusalem artichokes there. They're a nice vegetable. And um, literally as you're harvesting them you just leave a few tubers in and they just come back every year self-sufficiency made easy right and then next to the jerusalem artichokes i've done myself a bed of nine star broccoli so these are perennial broccoli um, they're actually closer to cauliflower so i've, I've read um, but with a taste like broccoli um, never grown them before grew these from seed i did buy some little plants that i potted on uh, end of last year those were what killed in the cold last year. I lost a lot of stuff in that cold. So I brought some seeds and I grew, grew these this year. Uh, they, they germinated really well, almost 100% and they've come on really strong. Uh, I don't know, having never grown them before, when I will get my first harvest. I, I did read on a couple of sites that you can get it in the, in the first autumn. You can get a bit of a crop and then they'll start coming again in the spring. Um, so we're just gonna have to see, I can't see any heads coming as yet but they're looking nice and strong I've, i have got to have a bit of a go through tidy up some of the lower leaves and i've, I've got a bit of weed in there so i'm gonna have to get the net off and, and give them a tidy but that's a whole bed of nine star broccoli next to the broccoli i've got my um sweet corn which is, is doing nice and well looks really healthy this year this is a, a variety called golden fleece um never tried it before <laughs> one thing with sweet corn that I don't know whether you should do some people say you should remove the side shoots others say you shouldn't so i have left them um in the past when i've grown sweet corn i've always left them and i always get a good crop um so i don't know if it really makes a difference or not but i do i do just leave all the side shoots in and then the same use, using up any space that you can i didn't have enough plants to finish the bed so i've just chucked four courgette plants in the bottom of the bed there you know i don't mind mixing things up a bit they get plenty of light just just i just bung things in wherever i can i infill with carrots courgettes just just if you've got a gap chuck something in it there's no point in leaving it as a gap it may as well be growing something it doesn't really matter what it is but um yeah they're, they're looking really really nice and healthy so quite pleased with those and, and i'm interested to see what these are do 
Uh, I'll do a video on these when I, I get my first harvest. So down this first central aisle, I've got my Autumn Bliss raspberries. And these are the all gold raspberries that I planted in my raspberry planting video. I've got one courgette that I've just chucked in where one of the raspberries didn't make it. Now, for some reason, the all gold have stayed really quite low, about two foot maybe is the maximum. And they really took a while to get going. Very slow to start, yellow leaves. And even these, which are from my own um, runners that I, I dug out, uh, they, they were sort of struggling yellow leaves and, and I just think, I actually think because the way my ground lies is sort of a bit of a dip and this, this area is going up. There used to be back in the 50s and 60s a landfill in the, the couple of fields behind mine. It's not underneath me, but I reckon when it was full, I reckon they built my land up a little bit decades ago uh, to meet it. And it's quite stony, this hilly part and the actual soil on top of the stone is quite a heavy soil and raspberries don't particularly like heavy soil. Now I did dig in some perlite and vermiculite and a bit of gravel in, in with these a little bit after I put them in and I thought it was a bit claggy. I, I got some um, gravel and, and just worked it in around them. But if, if they struggle too much, I've got no problem moving things. All I'll do is I'll, I'll put some more veg beds here, some more no dig veg and um, I'll just move the raspberries just down. Literally, the ground changes about 10 metres that way as you get to the, to the bottom of the dip um, where my potato patches is a lot more loamy. So it could be that. Um, but, but saying that, you know, the, these are coming on, there's flower on them. Even though these are short, there is a little bit of flower on them. Um, so I'm just going to see how they do over the, over the next year or so. And uh, I can always move them if I have to. My summer, summer fruiting raspberries, which are along the poles there on that side they struggled last year but this year they've come on now quite strong so we'll just have to see how they go anyway but you know i don't mind moving things if if they don't work it's, it's not a problem so in the center bit here i've obviously got my worm outdoor worm bed here um, all along this side i have got a thornless loganry um, a thornless blackberry and then a tayberry and another tayberry here um, again, similar to the raspberries, they struggled a bit in the first year, which, which was last year in the heat wave, so it could have been that. Um, and I've also got ri ri uh, vibrant strawberries planted all the way along underneath them, and they struggled a bit too. This year they have come on a bit better, um, but they're not massively vigorous, the, the climbers. So again, I'm just going to see how they do for a year or so, and they can always be moved. I can change things up. I could always use this for my tomatoes or something. Um, it's not a problem. On this side here is all my summer fruiting raspberries. So I've got a uh, Glen Ample here and, ooh, what are they called? I can't remember. Um, no, it's, it's out, gone out of my head. I can't remember the first ones, but um, two different types of summer, summer fruiting raspberries there, which I can tie up as they get taller to the, to the wires. And then in the middle here, I planted what I thought was three pumpkins, but actually this one's a courgette, so there's obviously a bit of a mix up there. Um, a big bumblebee just going into my pumpkin here. But the, these two pumpkins here are my Dill's Atlantic Giant. So these are like the record holder, sort of world record breaking biggest pumpkins that you can grow. So I'm just, I will do a separate video on this, which I've already started, um, but just following along seeing, I'm just gonna see how big I can grow them here. I do start things a bit later here, all my tomatoes, beet, climbing beans, everything I start a bit late, because I, I, like, like this year, I had a late frost, um, I think it was about the 27th of May, lost half my tomatoes, quite a bit of other stuff, and it's happened so regularly, I just leave everything later. Um, so the pumpkins are still a bit small, so obviously that will affect the size I can get them to, but you know, it's, it'd be quite interesting to see how, how big I can get them. To, to grow so there's two of those and they will eventually fill this whole area with with leaf um, and it'll be a bit of a jungle so back to the beds next to the sweet corn i've got a bed of leeks um, these are multi-sown leeks in this bed and that's that's just a full bed there of leeks and then here i've got my surviving tomatoes i think i had 18 yeah 18 tomatoes survive um, out of nearly 40 so I've lost I've lost about half half my tomatoes and even these even though I did them late 
they just don't seem quite as vigorous. So I think they were a bit hit as well. Some of the leaves were crisped up, but they, they came back and survived. But I think it has just stunted them a little bit. They just don't seem to have the vigor that they usually have. I mean, these are my all gold. Um, and they just, I don't know, they just, they just don't seem to be flying away. Um, like, like, no, not all gold, sorry, sun gold. Um, I was thinking of the raspberries again, but um, they just don't seem to be flying away like, like they usually would. But there's fruit on them. It's, it's coming, more trusses coming at the top, so they, you know, they will get there. And then all, all of that side is gardener's delight. And then this side of the bush variety there, um, uh, romas, which I use for my sort of pasta sauces and things like that. And then I, I planted some basil in between every plant. There's a little, little clump of basil. Um, I only put those out uh, a week or 10 days ago, I think. So that they're just starting to come on now, those clumps. But um, that's, that's those two beds. So in this bed here, I've got my celeriac um, up that side. And this side is purple curly kale. They're coming on nice and strong. Uh, this bed is due to be cleared. Uh, I, I have broccoli here, which I've taken the first sort of uh, mid middle out and I let them throw some side shoots, which I've had a few off, but they're now, they're starting to flower. So they're gonna come out and I'm, I'm gonna clear this bed. I've just got what I've got six cabbages left there to clear and then this will be cleared to put um brussels in i, I need to get some beds cleared from the brussels uh so yeah that's that's those two beds and then we'll move on to the parsnips next so these two beds are parsnips the top half of that bed is carrots these are the ones i did in my parsnip sowing video so actually what i will do now because obviously i did my trial these were direct sown and, and this is what i'm talking about when I, when I was, this is the reason I tried the sow grown um, in that bed. All of this side here, no germination at all. Now I, I did get a blackbird getting under the under the net and it hooked a bit of the seed about, but it was mainly up here with some of the carrots and through the center, this wasn't too disturbed. So the germination was just pretty terrible really. So all I've done is I've just infilled with carrots and these are carrots that I had actually grown in sows as well. Um, I, I like doing it that way. Whether they work or not, I don't know. I haven't tried the carrots yet. Um, but it's just so easy to infill if, if you've got lots of things in little cells. So I quite like that. But the, other than that, I've thinned these a little bit, but I will actually pull up one of these that I've grown in cells and I haven't pulled any up yet. So this, this is just to see if they are growing nice and true, for, nice and true from sow grown. So let's, let's get one. I don't want to get two now. I'll just get the, let's try that one. So you've got a smallish root on him. Uh, and there you go, look at that. So that's sow grown. That is a sow grown parsnip. Straight as straight. So as far as I'm concerned, if they're all like that, then this is the way I'm gonna do it from now on because I've got an absolutely full bed. There's no gaps, no, none died. They all germinated fantastically on a heat mat at home. And you can just plant them out exactly where you want them. None of this gapping like I've like I got with these direct sown ones. And that looks like it is coming perfectly. So I'm really happy with that. Chuffed to pieces. Yep. That's really good news. Right, so these next three beds. This is my second bed of purple sprouting, um, which are a different variety. These are called early purple. And I have grown these before and you can actually get some shoots in the same year rather than in the spring. Um, so they are a bit behind now. They haven't come on as well as the other ones, but we'll see what they do. I'll, I'll leave them in anyway and see what they do in the spring too. Um, this is the last of my field beans. Uh, just there were my broad beans. I've taken them up and replaced those with some young swede plants. Um, the field beans are pretty much over. I've got, I've got a bit of a picking left on them, but I do need to clear again for Brussels and, and winter cabbages and things like that um, and then at the bottom of the bed because I didn't quite fill it I've got beetroot this is a, a mixed variety a rainbow mixed sort of variety with gold ones purples and yellow and diff different sort of shades and the same uh, at the end of that bed there is, is beetroots too so that, that's these three beds just got two more left so these are the last two beds that's my bed of rainbow chard and in this bed, I put my, my, I had a few leeks that I sewed in a tray. Um, so I sewed these individually, dibbing them in like you would sort of normally, traditionally. 
um, so that was down to here and then again just gap filling I've just got a few spring onions and a few lettuce that I just chucked in at the end there that I had left in trays just just to fill the gaps um, my little herb garden has come on nicely the sage the times that they've all got really big um, I did lose my two kiwi berries I had a kiwi berry on either side of this that I was going to grow up. Um, they got killed in the in the cold, uh, so I've got a grapevine now either side, and I also planted a sylvan berry, which is a, another one of these sort of hybrid berries like blackberry, loganberry, raspberry crosses. You know they're hybrids. They produce quite a, a nice big long sort of loganberry looking berry. Um, just very, they are a very thorny climber but that should get sort of all over that that arch there so it take a bit of time but it should get there so that's all that side done so these last beds in the middle i've got two beds of perpetual spinach um, which i've been feeding to the chickens they did all start to bolt in the heat and uh they're bolting again i cut them all right down to the ground and they come back and you can continue to pick them but they are starting to bolt again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sow more um, spinach this week uh, that can then overwinter and I'll probably just do enough for one bed because I need to keep an, another bed spare again for, for winter veg the Brussels uh, or the cabbages etc um, in this bed here I've got cavolo nero kale at the top and then alternating purple and green curly kale at the bottom and then these are the last two beds so I've got purple and green curly kale again just green there and then alternating green and purple just down through the back there um, I do like my kale and then in this bed I've got um, Swede uh, best of all I think it's called on this top half of the bed oh excuse me and then multi sown leeks the last few pots that I had in the bottom half of, of the bed there so that's the whole vegetable garden I hope you enjoyed that um, it's the first veg garden tour I've done since showing it on my uh, introduction video so I thought I'd better do one but um, before we go I will just quickly show you my, my composting system obviously this is the fresh pile where all my grass cuttings shredded paper wood chip you know mixes and brown and greens all go into that and that's, that's holding actually just over 70 degrees um, today so I am, I'm producing a lot of compost now each of these bays well basically when it when it's finished in in the third bay each bay is about four cubic meters roughly pretty pretty close um so f you know i've been doing this for a couple of years now and uh obviously using the compost as quick as i can make it i, I had to actually buy compost for all my beds originally i've got 26 beds and it cost me about 50 pound a bed to set this garden up and that was just giving it about four inches of, of brought in compost the, the sort of cheapest compost i could buy so obviously after that i was doing my best to to get the depth a bit deeper so i was putting at least sort of three heaped wheelbarrows on in the autumn and even topping up here and there at other times too between plantings just to try and get that no dig sort of depth going that depth of compost now i've kind of caught up i'm actually producing an excess of compost which is why i'm doing things like growing my potatoes in containers um, i've got the compost to be able to do that now but I'm, I'm actually creating a bit too much of an excess at the moment so this will be turned over probably just judging by the size of that one now um, I think that is probably going to be overflowing into my way in about a month um, so i'm going to have to turn that into here so what i might do is i might actually move this bed and what's left in that bed to an outdoor holding area um, like i said i'm going to create a base somewhere out there i was thinking about putting it just out here but I, i'm not really sure about that i might, I might keep it in the veg garden I'm, I'm not sure i'll have to have a think but um so, so i've got basically a holding area where it can sit and just mature and the worms can can get into it a bit and that um, and that, that would just free me up to keep moving things along but it, it's it, obviously it's very nice on excess of compost that i do produce a lot really because i'm a gardener i'm a self-employed gardener um, so i get a lot of grass clippings so my only problem really is having enough browns to put into my compost so obviously luckily i've got four acres here i'll grow a lot of trees this is why i'm doing all my tree planting and trying to create my coppice woodland um, so this will produce me my own wood chip 
obviously I could source wood chip from other people, but and I have done, a friend of mine used to bring me some, but they now contract their, their tree cutting out his company, so I can't get it off him anymore. Um, but you always get a lot of rubbish in it. The, the workers are just throwing their rubbish in it, and you know, you never quite know if, if the trees that they're cutting have been along the side of a the road, they could have a lot of contamination and stuff. It's, I just like being able to produce everything myself, so I know it's clean, and obviously, all the grass cuttings that I use, I've only got a couple of contracts now. Um, I don't, I've tried to cut my garden down a little bit, so I know if there's ever been any treatments on that grass, I won't use it. I'll put it on the person's compost heap or I'll put it around my trees up in the woodlands for, for a few mows until it's clean again. So it's just nice to produce my own co compost and have my own browns going into it, which I know are clean and organic and nothing's been sprayed on them. Um, but yeah, so it's, this is all part of the whole self-sufficiency thing. You, you need to have a, a supply of compost. It's kind of the most important thing, really, for, for no dig. And um, and I am now self-sufficient completely in, in compost, more more than I need. Um, so, but this gives me the option to expand. I am I am thinking of expanding into the old vegetable patch. Um, it's two sort of areas. That is, it's the original area and a bigger area which I added on. So I'm thinking of possibly doing a, a no-dig perennial garden, like a food forest. Um, so these are all things going forward um, that I may well be doing. It's just time, really. I am still working quite a lot. It's, it's just having the time to do these things. Obviously, just looking after a garden this size and the whole holding, it takes a lot of time. And um, I just have to do things slowly. But I have got lots of plans going forwards. Um, so if you are enjoying these sorts of videos, if you're enjoying watching me on my self-sufficiency journey um please like and subscribe uh and you can follow me along and sort of any tips as well you know still i'm always learning just leave comments in the in the comments section and uh you know like i say subscribe and follow me along lots lots of different things to come i'm sure but anyway guys take it easy and we will see you next time